All right, so this is what we are talking about. Okay, assuming that initially uh, the aggregate demand function, this is the aggregate demand function at a certain uh, quantity of money. Okay, so we are call, calling the initial money supply M1. Okay, and at this point, this was the uh, equilibrium output Y1 with our price P1. Okay. Now, just assuming there's an increase in money supply from M1 to M2, what this is going to cause is an upward shift in what in the aggregate demand function or curve. Okay, so we move from a YD M1 to YD M2. But because the AS curve or the aggregate supply curve is vertical, there's no change in output. Your Y2 will still be the same as what? your y1 what is going to happen here is just an increase in what in the price level so an expansionary monetary policy will only cause inflation okay but as for output there's going to be no change in the output if you keep on increasing money supply the only change that we see here is an increase in price okay it's an increase in price so to these people, to this school of thought, they believe that inflation was a monetary issue. Okay, there's only increase in the general price level whenever uh, the central bank embarks on expansionary monetary policy. So if you have a question where they tell you that there was uh, an expansionary mo monetary policy, so you are to use the policy to uh, mathematically show how um, uh, the 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 policy will cause changes in uh, y in n in w o, o, over p all the real stuffs that we have been looking at the monetary policy will have no effect on those variables except price and if price is changing then we know that a uh, nominal wage too has to change i mean proportionately so if price is increasing then um nominal wage to should increase so that real wage will be constant okay so the key note here is that monetary policy has no effect on real output real output is not changing at all okay real output is not changing at all the only effect is an increase in the general price level okay right any question okay so we move on Now we want to look at a fiscal policy, okay? A fiscal policy, and we are assuming that there's an increase in government expenditure, okay? And whenever there's a government deficit, uh, these are the ways that this deficit can be financed. It can be done through what? Borrowing, so that is a bond financed uh, government deficit. And last week we saw what happened when the deficit is financed in the vulnerable funds market. We saw that there was no change in output. There's no change in aggregate demand, except that there are changes in the components. Okay, we saw this last week. So the, uh, the, the deficit can either be financed through borrowing or through what? An increase in tax. So we call this a tax financed government deficit, okay? So we can do this through tax, or we can do this through printing of money. Okay, so we call this the money financed increase in gym. But we just saw this one too. That uh, this one, if you want to finance the government deficit, we need to print more money, which means we are embarking on an expansionary monetary policy. And we just saw the effect. It will have no effect on output. So now we know the third one. We know the first one. Let's let's look at when the thing is done with taxes okay if the government de de deficit is financed through uh, taxation increase in tax what exactly is going to happen okay so that's what we want to look at so th th this is what uh, i was talking about the, the third one we know has no effect we know of the first one too so let's let's look at the taxes uh, this is what we looked at the other time, and I hope I, I hope we still remember this. 
okay, that if there's an increase in government spending, what is going to happen in the loanable funds market is that there's going to be an increase in uh, an increase in the interest rate, okay. And whenever there's an increase in interest rate, there's going to be uh, a, an interest rate induced for in what in investment. Whenever interest rate increases, investment will, will fall, which will offset part of the initial increase in gain. And because of an increase in interest rate, too, there's going to be an increase in savings, which means there's a corresponding decrease in consumption, which will offset the remaining part of the increase in gain. So there will be no change in aggregate demand, and there will be no change in uh, Output. We saw this last week. Okay, we, we saw this last week. Uh, this is a diagram that we looked at uh, I mean, last week. So I hope we still get it. Unless, of course, you have a question. If you don't have a question, we move on. Do you have a question? Okay, so. Assuming that the government re reduces the, uh, the marginal tax rate, okay, uh, what is going to happen is that there's going to be an effect on the after tax real wage. The reason is that just assuming initially the marginal tax rate was 40%, okay, so if you take a real wage of uh, 100 Ghana, you are supposed to pay 40 Ghana as a tax, okay, as the tax. But now, Assuming the marginal tax rate has reduced from 40% to 20%, it means that the real wage that you'll be taking home has increased, right? It has increased. It has increased from uh, uh, 60 Ghana to what? To 80 Ghana. Because now you are no more pay, paying 40%. You are only paying 20%. So you give 20 Ghana to the government. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes. Uh -huh. So what is going to ha happen is that now you you have a higher real wage, a, a, a higher after tax what real wage. And this can, I mean, we, we can talk, talk about this in different ways. One point is that uh, this can cause an increase in uh, the general purchasing. Okay, people will be buying more because now there's an increase in the uh, after tax real wage okay and then in another way to now there's a tax cut okay and because there's a tax cut uh producers and uh, uh, individuals who will be willing to work for higher number of hours there's an increase in the after tax real wage and as a result when you work for longer hours you get more money we know that there's a positive relationship between the real wage and then the labor supply curve okay so if there's an increase in the after tax real wage then there's going to be a shift in what in the labor supply curve which is going to affect the production fu function so let's 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 look at this let's look at the diagram here now the Initially, your your marginal tax rate was forty percent. So this was your uh, the 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 labor supply curve, and this is our labor demand curve. Okay, at point A, we had equilibrium in the labor market. So when we trace this to the production function, this was our output y zero. Now there's a reduction in the tax rate to twenty percent. So now there's an increase in after tax real wage, and as a result, there's going to be an increase in what the supply of labor. So this is what is going to ha happen. There's go going to be an increase in the supply of labor. So this will be the new supply curve with equilibrium at point B. So when we trace this, it means that the number of labor in the labor market what, will increase. And tracing this to the production function, we are going to have a higher what, level of output. So this is going to have a real effect because it is affecting the number of uh, workers in the labor market, which will uh, eventually affect the level of output, okay, or real output. Do we understand that? No, 
Yeah. Is that okay? So, so for for a decrease in the tax rate, let's look at the effects here. We've seen that there's there's an increase in real output, and then there's a reduction in real wage. You see what, what is happening here? There's go, going to be what a reduction in real wage. So for the, this one, uh, we have real effects. It's affecting N, it's affecting W over P, and it's affecting Y. So this is a supply side effect. The only change that, that can affect output, okay? It can affect the real variables. Okay, so you see that there's a there's an increase in N, there's a de decrease in W over P, and then there's an increase in Y. Okay, any question? That's what we we I mean we have here. What we have here hmm? at P zero, at P zero, that is where we were at equilibrium when, when the tax rate was forty percent. Now, because of a reduction in the marginal tax rate to twenty percent, there's a shift in the uh, AS curve, okay, from Y zero to what to Y one, and this is going to cause a reduction in price. Okay, this is going to cause a reduction in price. Okay, just just know that under this model, we said that the aggregate supply curve is vertical. Mm -hmm. Is vertical. That is why changes in the aggregate demand has no effect on output. Okay, so this is what is happening whenever there is a, a change in the marginal tax rate. This one is for a reduction in the tax rate. You can also do same for an increase in the tax rate and that's going to work in the opposite side. Okay, it's going to work in the... Hello. Yeah, Marvin. A reduction in the tax rate mm -hmm. causes price to fall. Yes, it is causing price to fall here because of a, a shift in the Y. Um, yeah, I was thinking it's rather like cause price to go up. Uh, let's let's look at something here. Uh, uh, where which diagram can I use to explain that? Okay, you you let's let me talk about it in this sense. Uh, when when there's a, a tax cut, mm, if the tax rate is being reduced, okay. What we saw here was uh, now people are going to rush into the labor market, right? More people will move into the labor market, which means that there's going to be a reduction in the nominal wage, right? The nominal wage is uh, what people are going to take from the uh, uh, from the producers. Okay, so now just assuming that initially we had only twenty people who were available for work. Now we, we have like forty people. Okay, which means that the cost of labor should reduce. So there's going to be a fall in what a fall in the nominal wage. A fall in what nominal wage, and we we are saying that uh, the real wage is what is W over P. So what is causing this fall in the real wage is be, be, because of the fall in the uh, the nominal wage. Mm -hmm. When we talk about this from the side of uh, aggregate demand, before we came here, we said that. Uh, the thing we, we are keeping the AD curve constant. Sorry. Uh, look, can you see this? We, we are keeping the AD curve what constant. And the re reason is that we have seen 